everybody. I'm going to show you how to build this face follower effect in Effect House. Uh, so the idea is that no matter where you are in the camera frame, it always kind of crops and zooms in uh, and focuses on your face. So you can see even when I get towards the edge, it, it tries to keep my face in the middle of the um, composition. So if you go all the way to the edge, it's going to do some weird stuff. Uh, but generally, if you're like far enough away from the camera, uh, like if you have a tripod set up, um, this works pretty well. So I'll go over just the basics of like what I'm using to accomplish this and, and like how everything's set up uh, roughly. Uh, and then I'll rebuild everything from scratch uh, so I can get into more detail. So in the scene, there's really only two components. Um, the first is going to be the head tracker. Um, and that's where we get the position from. Uh, to do the offsets. And then the second one is just a, a 2D, camera, 2D camera with a canvas uh, with an image. Uh, so that's just the image that's that you see like floating around. Uh, so we're using head position to offset the um, the image so that my face is always in the center of the screen. Um, so I'll zoom in a little bit here, do some reorganizing. Um, so yeah, we get the head position um, and then uh, you can ignore that for now. That's some, some magical stuff. Uh, we convert that position, the world position of the head to the screen position. Um, and then we use that in, um, oops. We use that to set our pivot of our image. So that's gonna be the, the center point. Um, so setting the pivot actually offsets the image. So that's how that's working. Uh, and then uh, we're also making sure the, the head stays the correct size um, based on the distance. Because you'll see if I get further away from the camera, my head is still the same size in the frame. So yeah, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, just scaling and, and like offsetting and there's the basics. So um, if you want, you can try to do this yourself. The, the biggest thing is this world screen patch. Um, and then everything else is kind of just like massaging numbers to, to get the effect to behave how you want it to. So I'm actually gonna keep all of this in here uh, for reference um, and then I will create a new image and a new head tracker. So I'm not actually gonna get rid of either of these things. I'm just gonna turn off the head tracker um, just so it doesn't complain uh, and then turn off the image and then create new ones. So I'll make an image, uh, 2D image, there we go. And then that image is just simply gonna be the camera texture. So cool, uh, it's full screen, not doing anything to it yet. So. That's fine. Um, and then we're gonna get a head tracker. Um, you go to AR tracking and select head tracker and there's your head tracker. So um, to get the position first, um, we're gonna click on this and then get position. I'm just gonna do the very basic stuff and then kind of build off of it from there. Um, so we wanna, we wanna convert this world position to a screen position. So um, world to screen. Simple enough. Uh, and you'll notice that we need a camera. Uh, so we'll, we'll get this camera. Um, I think you can just drag it in. Or do you have to do this? Yeah, okay, so you'll notice this says uh, scene object, which is not what we want. We want a, a camera type object. So you'll notice if we plug this in, it doesn't work. Um, so yeah. Uh, just get the camera like that and it'll work. So now, um, sometimes you have to uh, reset the effect for this stuff to, yeah, okay, now it's populated. Um, so now that's converting our world position to a screen position. Um, so we're gonna use that value uh, to control the pivot of our image. So I'm gonna get the pivot, or set the pivot rather. And then I guess reset. Yeah, okay, so now you can see those values going in. Um, but of course we have to send a trigger to set the actual thing. Um, so I'll just do an update event. 
so it updates consistently. Um, now, do I have to reset? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, that's the basics. Like, uh, it works pretty well, um, but there's like a couple of things that we can improve. Um, like, for example, the, the scaling. Like, so when I move backwards in space, I want it to zoom in on my face. Um, and another thing is like, it's very responsive right now. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to smooth that out. Uh, and and then finally at the end, there's like a weird thing that happens with the distance. Um, like there's this weird like offset thing that happens. So we're gonna add in a, a remapped value based on the Z position of the head and, and offset that, that weird um, offset. Uh, I don't know where it comes from, but uh, I'll show you how to fix it. Let's do the smoothing. Uh, so we're just going to smooth out this value that we're setting, uh, and we're going to do that with a lerp. Uh, so this is our, our target. So we're going to set this to the stop value, which is like the end value of, of the lerp. That's the, the goal destination. Um, and then the start is going to be the, the current position. Uh, so we're going to get that value um, from the image. So we're going to get the pivot. So this is the current position and then that's the target position. And then the step is gonna be like the, the amount of smoothness um, in this like interpolation. So I will reset. So now you can see it kind of takes some time to move to, to where my head is. So that's how you get that smoothness. Um, so you can do like 0 0.03, oops. So it's like pretty slow. If you want it to be pretty responsive, you can do something like 0.5. So it's still really responsive, but you also get a little bit of smoothness. So the higher the value, the more um, like accurate it's going to be. And the lower the value, the, the more fluid it's gonna be. So just play with that and um, uh, find the setting that you like. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of math, um, but it's not too bad. I promise. Um, we're we're basically just gonna get the the Z position um, of the face, and then use that as to control uh, the scale of the image, so that it keeps the the proportions of the face uh, intact. Um, so we're gonna remap the depth value to uh, a scale value, and then we're just gonna use that to set our scale. Um, and and that's that's it. So. It's not too crazy. Um, remapping is like one of the, the most useful math operations, in my opinion, because um, you can take one value and turn it into something else. So the values that I found for this um, are kind of arbitrary. Uh, I'm actually just gonna copy this. Um, if you look at uh, the world position, you can see the further I, I go away, um, the lower this value gets. So it goes to like negative 200, roughly. Um, so that was my starting value. And then the maximum I just set to negative 20. Um, but play around with these, uh, find find what you like. This is just going to be the, the Z value. So we're gonna get a split. And that's the wrong value. So this has to be vector three, first of all. And then we just want to get this position. So this is the world position. There's our input. And um, so yeah, this outputs our scale. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and um, get the image uh, scale 2D. We're going to set that. OK, so that does what we want. Uh, so it, it basically just turns it from a single value into a, a vector 2 and puts the same value uh, in in both slots. So that's good. And then of course, um, we need to plug in an event to actually set the value and then probably restart. Yeah. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Um, the other thing is uh, we want to massage this a little bit more. 
Um, cause you'll notice my head is like pretty small in the frame. So I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to add uh, a scale value, um, to, to like increase the minimum. Uh, and that's as simple as just adding a value here. So the one I found works pretty good is, is like 0.3. Reset again. Okay, that sort of works, but it, it's not like it's not really keeping the um, the the scale correct, uh, and that's because I forgot you have to actually square this value. So instead of using a, a power, we're just going to do a multiply. So multiply a number by itself is the same as um, square. Um, and I think that's just because of the way that, that distance works and camera perspective. I'm not totally sure, but um, restart. Yeah, it works. So um, yeah, a lot of this is not me like actually knowing the math behind this stuff. It's just kind of guessing and like plugging things in um, and seeing what happens. So um, do that and, and you know, stuff sometimes works out. Okay, so to recap that little um, adventure, uh, we, we just added this minimum value to um, to set kind of the, the base scale of the face on the screen. Um, and then we did some, some distance stuff, remapping um, and, and multiplying by a power of two. That's it for that part. So, I mean, we have the scale, um, but we could smooth that out too. So uh, why not? Uh, so I'm going to get the, the scale value and then just apply a lerp to it, just like we did with the other value. Uh, lerp stands for linear interpolation, by the way. Okay, so that's the start, that's the end. And then we'll do like 0.1. Set this back down to 0.12. Yeah, so now the the zooming is nice and smooth. The the positioning is nice and smooth. Um, what else? I guess I can show you how how this um, this workaround works. I think that's it. Oh, there's there's this where you can you can just add a value to kind of like shift the um, the locked point so if you want the if you want the user's head to be more in the upper third of the screen or something which seems to make sense um you could do this so i'm just gonna add it before i do the lerp and then reset so you can see my my head's more upwards um so i added um 10 percent so if i do like just to illustrate negative half, you can see the, the center points all the way at the top of the screen. Probably not what you want, but um, yeah, just to illustrate. So I think uh, like 0.15 might be good. And then gotta reset. So yeah, that way my head's more um, at the top of the screen and I still have some room for my body. Now, um, I don't have enough space to walk far enough back uh, in my room, so to demonstrate uh, where this gets weird, um, I'm going to get a, a different demo video. So it, it only happens when the person's like pretty far back. So we'll go to full body. Um, dancing is good. So now you can see like she's pretty far away from the camera. Um, and this is completely wrong. Like that's not her face. So uh, to fix that, we're gonna do another remap. Because um, for some reason the the pivot point needs to be like offset based on the depth of of the the head or like the the z position of the head tracker. Um, again, I don't know why uh, this needs to happen. It's probably some math thing. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you just simply take um, this position value and remap it again, I'm just gonna grab this. So it's like very similar to, to what we did before. So that's the Z. 
and then we're remapping it, and then we're going to um, use it to, we're actually going to use it to modify the world position, just because um, that's what I did before. So we're going to add it to the world position. So the idea is we're, we're just going to offset the Y value. So um, I'll kind of show you what that does like manually before I plug in the dynamic thing. Uh, so I think like 20 or 40. I guess she's pretty far away. Yeah, so oh, I'll just do the slider. Yeah, okay, so you get the idea. We need to offset it so it actually is tracking the face. So hopefully when I plug this in, oops, I'll actually do a combine here because <clears throat> we want to we want to plug this just into the Y value, plug it into the bottom. Okay, now those are adding together. Everything's flowing through. Well, I'm not sure why that's not working. Oh, it might be because I have this value higher, so I changed it a little bit. Anyway, um, yeah, this is probably an edge case, uh, but I just wanted to show you like um, how to address it. Uh, so, in the end, like just play around with these numbers um, and test, uh, you know, the various situations uh, with the the depth. Um, and kind of dial everything in like that. Uh, so let me switch back. So yeah, um, the only other thing is uh, maybe you could figure out a solution for this uh, is if you're pretty close to the camera, there's not enough of a canvas to, to be able to do the offsets and still have everything, um, you know, cover the whole frame. So if, if you're far enough away from the camera, everything's fine. Um, but if you get close up enough, uh, you know, it'll it'll kind of scale the thing down and like offset it So you get this like weird border stuff going on. So um, If you figure out how to like clamp those values, uh, let me know. I'd be interested in, the, in hearing your solution um, I haven't really tried uh, In effect house to do that yet. So um, Yeah, just let me know uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, Show me what you make with it and live long and prosper.